Howdy everyone, this is Trisha and welcome to my channel. Well, hello everyone. Today I'm continuing my bridal series for you. I am going to be creating a beautiful floral bouquet. This is going to be done with full flowers. It is going to be a cascading bouquet. This is a very elegant shape of bouquet and I think you will like it very much. It's not very hard. We're going to follow pretty much the steps that we did in the first uh, video that I did for you and I will put the link down below in case you did not see my round floral bouquets and uh, Let me tell you what the supplies are going to be so we can go ahead and get started Okay for my cascading bouquet. I've chosen these beautiful red flowers. You can see that right there. Yes, they are uh, Faux flowers they are silk flowers and they look just lovely and I love the color and I think it's very romantic and I think right now with the whole idea of you know the beauty and the beast and the red flower, some uh, weddings are now uh, being done in that theme. So this is the perfect flower, I think, for that particular kind of theme. But even still, red just seems to be one of those colors that we like to use for weddings if we don't go the pastel route. So these are the two bouquets that I chose. I've I grabbed two of these. These were actually like $10 each. Now, to do a little bit of a filler, I had re re uh, these uh, leftover from the bouquet that I did last week. I bought a, uh, oh, this was also like in a little bouquet as this. And these are hydrangeas. And what I did is I took them apart to use them as filler. So I've got a little flower right here that I'm gonna take apart to use as a little filler in there. I also got some greenery. And this time I'm going to be using this Ivy uh, Green Greenery here. And uh, this one cost me, I believe it was $7.99. So you can keep track of more or less what I'm spending here. Uh, also, uh, last week, <laughs> and I don't remember how much this cost me, but I think it was like, let me see, I think it was three fifty. dollars I still have my receipt right here. Uh, the crystals were $3.99 actually, and it was a package of 12, and I used some in the bouquet uh, from last week, so I still have some left over as you can see here. So I'm going to use some of those here, so it's pretty cost effective so far. I've also got some tool that I already had, but these... Uh, uh, rolls of tulle you can find them at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, etc. They're a cost you anywhere from three, four dollars, depending on the uh, design. This is a gold metallic finish on this particular tulle, as you can see right there. And I'm going to use a little bit of that because I want to incorporate some golds into my uh, uh, floral bouquet. I also have some a ribbon, and let me go ahead and open that up so you can see the the tone, the color. And I really wanted something a little more blood red, but I couldn't find it. So I went ahead and I grabbed this one. And it's got a nice red, kind of almost burgundy tone to it. But I felt that that coordinated just fine with the roses. And it was just a little bit different so that it did stand out. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can always choose something in the cream color. Or you can choose something in the gold. So you don't want to have too much red. This is what I chose. And I chose this uh, one and a half inch ribbon and I also chose this this one is 7 8 inch wide and it is the same exact ribbon just you know not as wide so I chose these two to incorporate in there to have plenty of a ribbon and of course this is more than enough there's 25 yards in each one of these I believe yes there's 25 yards in each one of these this one cost me let's see my ribbons this one cost me 250 the organza and this one cost me a dollar 75 25 yards i went to a particular floral store so if you could find yourself something like that or maybe go on amazon.com and get yourself you know nice big rolls of ribbon where you can get a good deal on that it'll be great because you'll have that plenty of that left over for other projects now i also wanted to decorate my bouquet just like i did the one last week and i have these pins these little scrolly type leaf pins and let me pull that out so we don't get a reflection from the plastic here you go I don't think my lighting is is very well placed so I'll move that a bit but here you go now you can see that right there what the pins look like and these are just uh, as you can see in the back they're just a pin and I'm gonna insert these into the flowers to make them uh, a little more elegant a little more blingy a lot of people don't care for that don't put that on there and I only spent what on this one here the one that I got and used last week, and I'll show you in the bouquet. See these little pins? That was a pack of six. That one cost me 
this one here, the six piece of floral pens cost me $3.50 for these three pens. They're beautiful. I mean, geez, I can recycle these and use them on something else on my top if I wanted to. It's just a pin or on a scarf or something. You know, the bride can do that when she has her bouquet at home. Okay, that is what I'm going to use as far as the materials. I do need, a, oh, well, I have more material. I have a greenery tape. You're going to want to get yourself a fresh new roll of floral tape. This one I've already started on it. I used it from uh, the last bouquet. I still have some on here, but make sure you start off with the fresh ones. Make sure that you have plenty of greenery tape. You never know how much you're going to use. Uh, but this is what I have, and I'm using green because I'm using green items in my bouquet. And, uh, and then I've got some floral tape. This was a little bit, eh, but I'm still using it. It got a little bit tangled somewhere along the way and I've untangled it many times and it tangles up again. I'm never buying this again, by the way. I'm going to be buying it in a little paddle like this. I love using like this, uh, but then again, I've this is all I have, so I've got to get more of that. Okay, so my tools, because that is all the materials. As far as my tools are concerned, I need uh, some wire cutters, some good wire cutters, some of my craft scissors that I don't use on fabric. I need some needle nose pliers and of course I always end up using my glue gun and glue sticks for something or another so you might want to have that ready I already have mine already plugged in and ready to go let's get to creating all right I've taken all my flowers and I separated them from their bouquets I've gone ahead and I removed um, a couple of these flowers out of the way these were the ones that were way in the center and you can see these little knobs here because they were all attached at these two points so the whole bouquet was attached to that instead of being wired around like the ones that I undid last week so I had to go in and just snip 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 all the stems and there was seven in each of my bouquet so I have 14 flowers and I don't need 14 flowers for my whole bouquet so I've gone ahead and separated the two centers from the bouquet because I don't feel like shaving that off at this moment and then I chose one flower that looked a little bit too crushed to flatten which was this one and I'll just save these for another little project so I'm gonna pull these apart because I don't really care for them right now and what I am left here then is with 11 flowers now I may not use all of these but at least I know that I can and they're there if I want to create a really huge bouquet but I feel like I want to make something sort of medium-ish not too big okay so I've got my greenery here as well and I've also separated it from the large stem the heavy stem that they were at and I've just cut them at the very bottom the longest points for each one so now I can separate them like so and then I can choose which ones I want to use I already know right off the bat that I don't really want to use too long of a of a vine so I may use the second length on my book on the bush that I cut off of greenery so I think I'm going to use that one and I don't have my grid here to measure but I will I will tell you uh, I'll get something right now to measure and I will tell you uh, more or less the length so that um, you'll know what to do when you're building yours. Okay, and then I've got some smaller bits and I'm going to put these also to the side because I, I'm i going to be using some of that now. These long ones, as I said, I'm not going to use them. So I'm going to put them way over to the side. That way, what I'm using, I'm putting it to my left. Okay, you can do it any way you want. Okay, then I took this uh, hydrangea little uh, stem and I cut some some of the bits here from the bottom part so that I could separate them and I've already gone ahead and I've wired and put floral tape on them and let me show you what I've done here I've got several that I've already prepared so this is the preparation that you want to do is you want to start preparing and getting all these things separated and uh, also wired if you have to so I have another one here another little piece right here and as you can see it has a very short little stem from where I cut it so I'm going to take some wire and I'm going to take about, it could be 10 or 12 inches or maybe less even. And, uh, well, I wouldn't go any shorter than six inches, but anyway, uh, I'm going to take my wire and I'm going to take about, that's about an inch and a half where I'm going to start wrapping around. So I'll wrap the longer piece around that little stem like so. And then I'm going to take the other piece and then just push, pull it down and then wrap it along the other wire just like that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover that with floral tape so here's my floral tape right on top of the wire I start wrapping oops I cut it off I start wrapping around pulling on the tape so it releases the adhesive on the tape and then just rolling it around pulling rolling 
and pressings to make sure that the tape is getting stuck on that wire. Okay, so it overlaps itself just a bit. You wanna make sure that the tape does that. And then just tape it down as far as you wanna go. You don't have to go the whole length of the wire because we don't know if we're gonna be in, end up cutting it or not. So of course, we don't wanna have all that tape wasted and of course these little bits of wire we don't want them covered in tape because we may use them for something else so just tape it to a certain point and I've gone about five inches downward at least so just do that and if you have to tape it some more you can and if you don't then fine okay so now I've got one two three four five six seven little bundles with these little hydrangeas and put that over to the side and then I grab my tool and I cut little squares and my tool was five inches wide so I cut about five inches I don't have a grid I'm not measuring but this is more or less a square if not a rectangle but anyway just cut yourself some pieces like that and I've cut five of them and actually that's all I was able to take out of my roll exactly five pieces so what I'm gonna do is you just put it down on the table and right in the middle just pinch it and bring it up like so just like if you're gonna create like a little fan but it's not fanned out it's just just a little pinch bring everything up again take another piece of wire the same about you know eight ten inches long get about one and a half inches here start rolling the longer wire around and this is a little trickier because that tool moves around on you and that's what you're gonna do just wire it around and this is where I use my needle nose pliers I get my needle nose pliers to tighten that to make sure that the tool doesn't slip out of there bring that end and then wire it around like so and then you're going to do the same thing to this as you did to the hydrangea or your other little filler flowers depending on what you use you're going to use some tape again covering the bit where the tool is wrapped with the wire to make sure i cover all that up and just twisting downward now i know i don't need this whole length so i'm going to go ahead and trim this piece of wire Put it over to the side i ended up cutting a whole bunch of pieces of wire in advance as well so that all i had to be doing is grabbing and uh taping or i mean wrapping around what i needed okay so here we go i and i did some already in advance as well so i've got five of these pieces okay now you'll notice that this one has got the uh you know the pointy little ends to it because it's like little little triangles kind of where they got folded up a little bit you can leave it like that it looks perfectly fine or if you want you bring them upward and you cut them and you round them off just a little bit so I'm gonna go ahead and do that to this one because I did it to the other ones so just hold it flat like that get your scissors and cut across all the pointy ends and there you go just like that so now I've got those prepared and now I want to do some ribbon loops so I'm gonna take my most narrow ribbon which was the 7 8 inch ribbon and I'm gonna make a little double looped uh, bows so I'm gonna do a little tail about two inches long pinch and twist make a loop again about this is about three inches so one and a half inch loops pinch and twist make another loop on the other side pinch and twist and then you're going to cut that other length the same as this first one here and now you've got a little bow here take some wire and just at the very top edge again one and a half inches over and then just grab both and twist them and then twist the bow so that it tightens that way into the bow and you make sure it's a nice tight grab and that won't slip out and then of course you're going to wrap that as well with your floral tape and then just repeat that and make as many as you feel you're going to need I made five so there you go five of those and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue with these bows and I grabbed five of these little rhinestone stems that I showed you that were in that little bundle that I had still left over from my first bouquet and I'm going to put these on each of my little bows here and put them up high I don't want the bow to cover them so put them up high wrap the wire around each one of them and then again you're gonna take some greenery tape and wrap that up so that you don't see these this other wire wrapped around that one so there you go that's what you're going to do now if you want to save yourself some tape you make your loops 
with a wire. Don't put greenery on them. Go ahead and grab your little rhinestone stem if you're going to be adding that or your little pearl stem because I do have some little pearl stems that I used in the other bouquet. And as a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and dig some of those out and put some on this one. But there you go. Just put it on there before you take the whole thing and then just take them all together and you'll save yourself some tape. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go pull out those pearl stems because I'm actually going to add that with my tool. So the same thing as I did with these. I'm going to pretend this is a pearl stem and put it on my tool and then again tape it together. All right, so then I'll be back with all of that done. All right, I've done and finished and prepared all my little stems here and now they have become little sprays with a ribbon and a little rhinestone and of course on the tool I have added these little pearl spray to it so all of them have that now so I can go ahead and put these items off to the side and now I want to work with my flowers now if these were fresh flowers which would be awesome but we can't all afford to use fresh flowers so we go the faux or silk flower way and of course they're beautiful and why not sometimes your faux flowers can end up costing you quite a bit so using faux flowers is not something that oh uh, should be frowned upon okay uh, don't think that oh she used faux flowers for her wedding so that means she can't afford you know this or that don't even go that route because faux flowers can be very expensive they may even end up costing you more than fresh flowers. The reason fresh flowers are expensive is because you always have to order more than what you need because sometimes they don't all come all nice in the box. They do wither and of course you need them to all be looking nice and they need to be cut at a certain length because we don't know how long the stem is going to be needed for whatever arrangement or bouquet is going to be used. Also the flowers have to be at their peak where rather they're at still the roses are still probably at a rosebud what is it called a button or a rosebud rather than an open flower because you don't want to receive open flowers because they're going to be gone the next day and when you're working for a wedding you've got a time schedule and these flowers have to be right for that moment so that's why you end up paying a little bit extra for fresh flowers but don't be fooled full flowers can be expensive now yes of course we can go to the dollar tree and find some little expensive flowers and make a pretty little bouquet and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that be proud because you did the work yourself be proud because you put that into your wedding all right let's go on and fix these flowers okay i've got a little ruler here because i decided uh, i'm going to use this to kind of give you an idea of how big and long this is going to be. Now, if these were fresh flowers, as I was saying, I would take some wire. Now, the wire that I would use on a fresh flower would be probably a 20 gauge. The flower, the wire that I'm using right now, this is a 22 and I have another one that's a 24 uh, gauge wire. These are kind of thin wires. So for your fresh flower, if you have a fresh flower stem, I'm getting all tongue tied here. You would use a 20 gauge, maybe even a 22 gauge, uh, and then you would cut, or if you buy them already, they're already in 12 inch lengths, which I would probably do that. But if you happen to buy it on a something like this, a thicker wire, then you would uh, cut at least 12 inches, okay? So then you would take that, an end of that wire, as you can see right here, and that would get inserted to the bottom of the fresh flower. You would insert it into it just a bit, so that then you can take the rest of the length of the wire and wrap it around. And why are we doing that is because we want to have some wire on our fresh flower so that if we want to bend the fresh flower just the tad without breaking the actual stem, the wire will hold it in that shape, okay? So that is what you would do. And I think I mentioned in the video before that I would tell you how to prepare a fresh flower and that is how you would do it. You would take a wire, poke it in just a bit, and wrap it down okay so that's what you would do and then of course you could wrap it around with a greenery tape or just don't cut the wire so long so you don't have to cover up so much okay on these flowers what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the leaf I don't need that on there because I'm going to be using the ivy I may use a couple of these but I don't think I'm going to use them uh, with all these uh, leaves on there so i'm just going to be putting them off to the side and i'm going to decide how many i'm going to use so let me go ahead and put them in the middle right here so that i can start deciding what i want and i want to start off with three flowers 
to create the top part of my bouquet or the round part of my bouquet. So I've got those and then I'm going to add a couple more and I always want an odd number because I always want one right in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, well, I'm gonna need five. So there you go, five for that particular part of the bouquet. And then I'm gonna to wanna to build a cascade going downward. So I'm gonna pick one flower to be my longest point there we go, it doesn't have to reach all the way over there. We're just creating a, a triangle right now, a spray. And you've seen me do that already before where I grabbed a flower, put two other flowers to create a triangle, tape them together, and that created a spray. So I'm gonna go ahead and take two flowers like this. See, so now I've, I'm using eight flowers in my bouquet. And then I'm gonna want one more right about right here. Okay, so I've got a triangle right here, but then I've gone ahead and I've gone down. So now I've got a diamond shape, okay? And then of course, this flowers would go right about here. Can you see that happening? I hope you can because this long stem is going to attach to all of these. So I want to get these, these two onto here, keeping the length of these. I'm not gonna trim these. And then I'm gonna add this one in here. So now I'm getting a longer stem. And then when I wanna put it attached to this, I'm gonna have some stem here to wrap onto these. Okay, so <laughs> let's get to doing that. So now we know we need these four for our diamond and I'm going to put them over to the side. And here are our five. And then of course I had two left over because remember I had 11 that I had put to the side that I thought I would use. I'm gonna get these two, put them aside with the other three that I pulled over earlier. I'm gonna get these five here, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut off all these leaves. Like I said, I don't wanna use those. So here we are again, preparing flowers. And on these, I am going to take the bows that have these pretty little rhinestones because I'm gonna do the same similar thing as I did with the other flowers. And I'm gonna take this, put it right next to my stem. I wanna make sure that it, I don't necessarily want the bow to stick out any higher than the flower, but I do wanna make sure that the rhinestones are sticking out, so that's all you need to do, is just place the bow right about the edge of the top of the flower. And then you're gonna take your greenery tape and wrap that together. So I'm gonna do that to these five flowers because I do have five of these little ribbon bows with the uh, wine stones that I prepared. So I'll go ahead and do that and I will be back once those are completed. Okay, so I'm back and I've gone ahead and put all the, the uh, ribbons with the rhinestones on these five flowers. And I've gone ahead and I've laid it back again into the, uh, the shape that I want, which is my little round bouquet here and then the cascade going downward. And then I'm measuring from my bouquet up here down to the last flower here that cascades down. And that's about 17 inches. Seven, this this uh, measuring stick here that I have here is 18 inches long. And that's about 17, 18 inches. Okay, so that way you have an idea now where these flowers are going to rest. The other thing that I um, was thinking about while I was doing this is that I decided that I wanted some of this ribbon down here somewhere. So I decided that I wanted some rhinestones down here so I'm going to switch off two flowers I'm going to switch the longest one and then I'm going to switch off this one here that's going to go right here so that those two have some rhinestones in them and then I only have these three up at the top with the rhinestones and then two that don't and that's okay because I'm going to uh, make sure that all these little rhinestones are somewhere tucked in between so that it it kind of evens out or balances out in there. And I don't have too much because I do have those other pins that I showed you that have rhinestones that I wanna place in the flowers and therefore I don't need that much on here right now. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and start preparing these with these other little bundles and the greenery that I've done. So I wanna go ahead, this is my flowers that are gonna make my diamond. I'm gonna go ahead and take the flower that's gonna hang the, long, the longest on my cascade going downward. I'm gonna bend it up facing upward just a bit so that when it's hanging, it's actually being seen from the front and not facing downward. Now, of course, 
if when you're using these flowers, it doesn't all have to be, you know, like roses like this. It could be rosebuds. So you can interchange these with rosebuds as well. Or if you wanted to use a different flower, you could. So I'm going to take this stem and I'm going to trim off just a little bit of this greenery down here because I wanted to have a long piece where there's nothing like that. And I'm going to place my flower in there so that I can decide how much more I want this greenery, greenery to hang off from at the bottom. And I've decided that I want about eight inches and I want to make sure some of those leaves are cradling the flower. I don't want to put the flower down here where it's all bald. I want to cradle it in there. So now I'm going to go ahead and tape these two stems together and create a starting of creating a, a spray of flowers. So here we go. Let's get that on there. And I've got plenty of greenery, so I'm not scared that I'm gonna run out. Okay, so I've got that one. And I'm gonna take the one that's gonna go at the bottom of my diamond shape, or rather at the top, because you know it's this is gonna be the top of the bouquet. And I'm gonna take another one of these long pieces. This time I'm gonna trim off more of the greenery because I'm gonna make it a little shorter and that it's all up to you, of course. And then again, I'm gonna cradle this inside. I'm gonna go ahead and take this piece off as well, just realizing I don't need that. And I'm gonna keep this whole length of the, the greenery stem. I'm gonna keep that because that just adds to the length of this. And I wanna cradle it just a little bit so that when it goes in here, there'll be some greenery covering up this tape on here. So you can see that happening there where it's covering between the flowers. So I wanna make sure there's enough greenery, enough of this to cover right here. When of course I have that one there. So we're gonna have that like so. Let's tape that onto there. And we don't wanna tape it too close to the flower, okay? We wanna tape it, you know, a little bit far away so that it has some, you know, some movement so that your bouquet is not all tight, you know, like all like together like that, but rather, you know, loose like that. So, you know, some wind comes along and blows. There's some movement and it gives it more of a fresh look, if you will. Okay, so I'm only gonna tape it down so far because I'm gonna cover it up even more with more tape and I don't wanna waste too much. Okay, so here we go. This one's gonna go right here. But before I put that one there, I've got the two that are gonna go on the sides that create the triangle. And to those, I also wanna add some greenery. So I'm gonna take these little short bits remove any little little bits over there where obviously a leaf was supposed to be there but it's not there anymore and I'm gonna do the same thing cradle it into the leaves get some tape I'm trying to make sure this is all on camera so that you're seeing all this happening pull on the tape as you wrap it around make sure it's taping everything there we go I've created this now and I'm gonna do the same to this one, and I shall be back. Okay, so I've gone ahead and taped these separately as well, and now I want to grab my little hydrangea bits, and I'm gonna take one of them, and I'll put it right in here, cradle it right in there, against the, my longest flower there, and I'm gonna tape it. Also, just a little bit of tape, just to grab onto it. There we go, just like that. I'm gonna put some on here also. And tape that down. I don't know if you can kind of start seeing what's happening here. All these flowers, all these sprays getting formed. Let me move the camera back a little bit. There we go. All these sprays being formed now. And then they're gonna all come together to create a beautiful cascade. Some of these I think I'm going to use um, at the top part, but I do have plenty of those, and I don't wanna to use too much at the very top and then nothing at the bottom. So I'm gonna take another one of these, and this time I'm gonna go kind of long and just grab the wire back here so that it's kind of dangling out quite a bit. And you can do that however you want. This is just the placement that I'm choosing. There's no rule or anything like that to any of this part. Once you're adding little fillers and such, you just kinda of wanna you know make things a little even not too even because you want your your stems to look natural you know fresh and natural 
as if you went outside and just grabbed some stems from outdoors and just put them together and they're not all gonna be perfectly the same. Okay, so now we've got that on there and I do wanna add some tools, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that right in here, a little lower than that other flower, just to fill in this little area here where you might look into it and see the, the wire or the wrapped wire and I don't want that to show, so wrap that in there. I'm going to do the same to this one. I'm not going to do it to the outer two. I'm going to save the tool for the bouquet at the top. All right. Okay. I just saw some greenery fly off, and I don't know where it flew off of, but I feel like maybe it was from this one here. so because this one's kind of short and it's missing this part but I don't know where it came off of so I'm gonna end up oh I think it just broke off okay so I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna hot glue it on there well no actually I'll just pull it up a little bit and just tape that on there let me just cut a piece of tape that's a little bit shorter so I can get in there wrap that in there you could hot glue it let it dry cool off and then put some tape over it to cover any glop of glue. Okay, so here I did some surgery, and you could do that with fresh flowers as well. Okay, you can tell right here where I taped it right there. Okay, that's what I do. Let's keep our little shape like that. So that's pretty. Let's put it over to the side a little bit. Let's go ahead and work on our flowers. These are going to go around. I like this one. I like this one. It's the biggest one, and I kind of like that for the center, sort of, kind of. And now I'm thinking that I want to add ribbon to this one, because I do have more of those uh, rhinestone sprays. So I'm going to make one more, because this is my center flower. I don't want any on that. Let's do that. There we go. And I have some piece of wire already here so that's awesome and I'm gonna grab a little rhinestone spray that I put over to the side there we go put it on there and tape it there we go just like that okay just cut it off all right, so I'm gonna take my, uh, here, this flower didn't have one, so let me go ahead and put that on there and tape it down to the stem of the flower. Okay, cut that off. All right, so now I'm gonna take my center flower and I'm gonna start taping these flowers and I'm gonna bend them just a little bit like that. Can you see that where I bent it? Just a little bit. And right at that bend, I'm going to start taping them together all the way down. I don't know how much I'm going to need of length, so I'm just going to use the whole thing. And there we go. I've taped that down, so I'm going to take another one, do the same thing where I bend it, put it alongside the other one. And these are at the same, pretty much the same height, the same length. Okay? Tape it down. And then come back up a little bit. And there we go. So now I've got that. Now on this side, on this side, and then on this side I'm gonna do the same thing. So just bend it outward. Place it in there. All right, and I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. Now on the other side of that center flower, this is my center flower right there. Bend it outward a little bit. And tape. And I forgot to do something. <laughs> and that was to put greenery on some of these stems, but that's okay, I'll do it on the outer part. Okay, you know, around the edge here. Okay, so now that we've got this, We've got some little hydrangea bits. Let's put them between the flowers and I'm probably gonna need to prepare another one because I've got four spaces right here. So that's what I'm going to do. Put the, that in there, tape it down. 
another one. All right, you can see what I'm doing here. So now I've got these little hydrangea sprays and I'm putting them between the roses. So I've got one more here. So I need to build another one to put right in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, tape it down, and then I will be right back to show you what I've done. Okay, so I placed all the um, little hydrangea spray flowers in there. At this point, they're probably not a hydrangea. They're just some little flowers depending on what you choose. Now, you don't have to choose what I have chosen, of course. Choose whatever colors, and if you want, you don't even have to put these little flowers in there. This is an idea of what you can do, and if you have that, this is how you can put it together. Use your own taste, obviously, to pick out your flowers, colors, etc. how much you wanna put in there, if you don't wanna put in so much. Smaller flowers, if you feel like this is too big, whatever, okay? This is just an idea of how to put a bouquet together. It is a pattern that you can follow. So now what I've done is I've also bent these little rhinestone sprays downward so that I can see the little rhinestones resting on top of these roses rather than sticking straight up. And that way I can see all these little rhinestones against the red of the flower. So I've got one more over here that I've not yet bent over so just bend it over just a bit open up the sprays a little bit so they're not so tightly closed and there you go you can okay as you can see the center one still doesn't have any uh it doesn't have any rhinestones but i did show you those pins and i want to use that right on there so this is what i have so far now i've got three tools now you're probably going to be like oh does that mean you have to make another one no i'm not going to make another one because i have this tool right here at this flower this right here and then that's gonna go right here. So I don't wanna put a tool somewhere near this. So I'm just gonna put tool around at three places of my bouquet here and not worry about putting any over here because that's gonna go right next to that. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm not gonna even have it come up too far up either because I kinda of just want it in there to fill in empty spaces. I don't necessarily want the tool to be anything that really shows up. Another thing I was doing and I didn't tell you about is I only taped to a certain point and let these stems, you know, be uncovered because I don't know if I wanna cover that all the way down with tape yet or if I wanna use ribbon to cover it or if I wanna use a diamond wrap that I used in the other bouquet that I did last week, which again, I will link down below in the description box. So I'm only taping up to a certain way, trimming my wires of anything that I add so that they don't come go out any further. Okay, so now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape it and I'm about to run out of tape, so I've gone ahead and I grabbed a brand new roll because I just knew that wasn't gonna be enough, especially for a cascading uh, bouquet and if it's got all this little items here and there you know you're going to use a lot of tape and i do a lot of talking okay let me finish that up all right over here trim that wire here Making a bouquet takes a long while, so plan on taking quite a bit of your day. I think it's taking me now about two hours to just get to the step. But then again, I have I have stopped um, to check my video and make sure it's recording and make sure did I mention this, that, or the other. So um, I have looked over what I've already recorded a bit. Um, and then of course I took a little break. You know, nature calls. But of course, you know, preparing all these things, little sprays, little ribbons and such is gonna take a while. So here we go, that's what I've got so far. And like I said before, if you feel like, you know, you're working with red and then you don't wanna work with red ribbon as well, use a, a different color or uh, don't put any ribbon up on top of here at all if you don't want. Or just make it a one loop, one loop bow, which you would just take it, twist, sorry, oops. I got tape on my finger there and it's really bugging me. It gets sticky after a while, your fingers get stucky. Stucky, they get sticky. So I, I would recommend having a little bucket of water. Not only that, but you can use it in case you burn yourself with a hot glue gun if you use it. I haven't used it so far. 
but sometimes you have to glue the, the flowers onto the stems. They come off, so you gotta use some glue to make sure it doesn't come off anymore. But anyway, a little bucket of ice water if you have some, and a little sponge that you've uh, uh, put a little bit of dish soap or something on so that you can use that to wipe your fingers off and get that t sticky tape off of it. Because, you know, then you get dirt on your fingers. You get the tips of your fingers get all nasty and dirty and ugly. So you want to do that so that you don't get it on anything else, especially if you're working with light tones. But anyway, that's what you can do. Have a little sponge with some soap and some water to rinse off. Okay, so we would just do one loop instead of instead of doing two and then just cut it right there. And then you just have that one little loops coming out from behind your, your flowers rather than all this. And another thing is that I can do is I can also go through here and trim the tails so they don't stick out so much. Cause I feel like, oh, that's just too much ribbon poking out. And that's what I'm doing right now because I looked at it and I decided that, oh, you know that ribbon, the tails, it's already a lot, you know, with what's happening with the little loops. Not only that, but you could use a thinner ribbon and just, you know, that eliminates that problem. So I'm just trimming off a little bit off the tails. Okay, so that's what I have so far. Now, I want to go ahead and put some greenery to uh, go around this a little bit. So I'm gonna take some of these uh, bits here that were shorter like so, let me leave that leaf. What I liked about this ivy when I chose it, and they had so many different colors, some in that uh, kind of a frosted uh, green tone that I used in the other one, and some just green, but this one had a little bit of little bit of speckles on it. I don't know if you can tell on this leaf. There's some speckles, some color in here. Here's one that has quite a bit of it. Little pinkish bits there, little red pinkish bits. And I thought that would, you know, look really nice against the red. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just going to take a few, just like I did the tulle. I, I did three of them. I'm going to do three uh, little branches of uh, greenery and place them around my round bouquet part. So that's what I'm going to do now. Let's take that on there. And also trim it so that it's not going any further down than that, the tape that I have on there so far. So I'm going to tape downward, and then I'm going to come back up because it is a short little stem. Go beyond it and then come back up. There we go. So now I've got this. And everywhere that I put uh, one of these, I'm going to put some uh, greenery. And I'm not putting it in this area because I've got some greenery sticking out over here. So I don't want to overdo it which it already kind of looks that way, I know, but you know, that's my dog just barking at whatever wind blows out there. Okay, let me go ahead and finish this. It's, I think it's just after three, so it might be, I don't know if it's, if it's that time yet for kids to be, arriving in the school bus. There's a couple of kids in the neighborhood that still arrive in the school bus and they walk past the house. Am I right? <laughs> no, I'm thinking, no, they've grown up already. Okay, so she could just be walk barking at somebody walking their dog. Okay, let me see. Let me grab this one. I don't need that. I'm trying to keep my area as clear as I can so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I've got one more piece of tulle right here. So that's where I'm going to put the other greenery. Look how pretty that looks already just on its own. That would be a bouquet on its own. Right there. Okay, trim it some more because I moved it down. All right, let's go ahead and take that now. I was thinking about doing one of those live videos that a lot of people are doing uh, since I'm uh, able to do that now on my channel. Um, but I need to pick some some sort of a craft that I can do for you or I don't know if it's food or a craft that's not going to take an hour <laughs> or something of a live video. Uh, I've asked my husband if he will help me with that because 
I'm, I'm hoping some of you will be there to watch it live if you catch it. And sometimes you gotta, I see them, you know, they're waiting around to see, you know, more people come on uh, to make the presentation worth it. So, of course, that takes up time, and that's why those videos are always so long, the live ones. But I've been wanting to do that. I just thought maybe I'll do like a little quick little, not so, you know, involved project. And uh, that way, uh, if you have some questions about some other things, I can answer them. All right, so anyway, that part is done. If I had another uh, tool and another greenery right here, that would be a complete uh, bouquet. And there you go. You could wrap it up with ribbon, put some bows hanging off of here. You could uh, wrap it up with a diamond wrap, make it nice and elegant. And that would be it. Put a pin up here on the top. These pins that I showed you. Put one on there if you like, if you want more bling, or maybe another one of these little rhinestone sprays right over that. And that would be a complete bouquet. But I'm doing a cascading bouquet, so I need to add a little bit more. So here we go. Here's my diamond. And now I'm going to go ahead and put these together on here. And I need to do lots of wrapping to make sure they don't come out. And I'm going to fold the flower up and then curve it sideways. The little curve I did. So it's curved out this way. And then now I'm going to tape that but I need my fresh tape. And every time I start a new roll of tape, I can never find, where does it start? And then I think I see it and I pull on it and it's not, but I think I did get it right this time. <gasps> did I? Yes, I did. All right, okay. Let's tape this guy to here. And tape him on really well. Make sure I cover it nicely that I wrap up this tape nicely around because this is not going to get covered anymore by anything else so i want to make sure that it's on there and the flower is facing upward spread out the greenery some i'm going to do the same thing on the other side got my flower bend it upward and then sideways and it doesn't have to be completely even with this one okay just more or less right about there so now I'm going to tape that together starting a little bit lower okay wrapping it up real nice overlapping the, the tape on itself pulling slightly to release that adhesive go back up in case I missed a spot Tape it all the way down, grabbing all the stems, all the way, the complete length of them. And then come back up a little bit so that it is all nicely wrapped. Here's the back view and here's the front view. There you go. Now, this one here will go right up in front. You can maneuver this greenery this way, that way, or just let it rest somewhere in between. I'm going to let it rest somewhere in between. And I want it right about right here. Make sure that's bent forward as well. And tape it down really, really well. And that's going to take a while. And my fingers are hurting. Yes, your fingers are going to hurt. I don't recommend this if you have really bad arthritis unless your doctor has said, hey, you need to get those hands moving, then uh, I don't know if that's a thing or not, but if he does, well then, that would be the only reason to do this. Otherwise, oh my gosh, why are you doing this? Okay, my hands are gonna hurt later, I just know it. My fingers are gonna be hurting for a couple of days. Okay, I'm taping it all the way down as well grabbing everything and making sure everything is well taped together. Okay, I'm gonna cut it right there because I know that this part will get wrapped onto here, so. And it probably, I'm probably gonna end up trimming it, I don't know, as of yet, because I was starting at an 18 inch length where it hangs off and it might not be completely 18 inches. Let's see, from that rose, no, I'm more or less. I think it's coming out 
uh, yeah, about 17, 18 inches almost. Put it on this side so you can see what I'm doing. When I'm comparing, I am starting, I'm placing my, my flower more or less, this flower here somewhere where I think it's probably going to be. So then I'm measuring from this flower to this flower. And like I said, my, my measurement here is 18 inches. So that's about 18 inches right there. So I am keeping it about right. I did put these all together at the right length. So let's pull them, pull them aside here because I want you to see what it looks like. This is what it looks like from the back. The two flowers on the sides. The one that I decided was gonna be at the bottom length. Then the one at the top to create that diamond. There we go. Isn't that pretty? I think that looks pretty on its own. And this is a beautiful, actually this, this could actually be a bouquet on its own. Or it could be a beautiful spray that you could put a beautiful bow on here. And uh, if you decorate the vehicle, a lot of people do, especially quinceañeras, they like to put flowers all over the car. This would be a pretty uh, spray to put on the car. This would be pretty spray to put um, hanging off on the pews on the side of the pews at the church, you know, on the seats. Put a big bow right here, hang it upside down like that. It would be a beautiful swag right there to hang. Use your imagination. If you have this long stem, if you have a thin vase, just stick it in there. Put some flowers on this side. Make two of them like this, actually. Or make, make one like this and then make a third one that just has these three flowers and then put it on this side facing out this way. Stick them in vases and there you have an arrangement that you could just pull out and put the vases away separately so they don't break, etc. when you're done with your wedding. Anyway, there's an idea. Let's go ahead and get it onto this bit because we are almost done. I do want to get some ribbon to make a beautiful kind of a loose bow. It's not going to be a bow that stands up, and, you know, big like in an arrangement, like in a basket. This is just going to be some loops and some strings that are going to hang down. And that's why I got these two widths because now I want to use this. So I'm going to use some of this and I'm going to cut it at about the same length as the greenery all the way down right about here so then I'm going to just loop it again and then cut it and then I'll worry about my ends don't worry about the ends right now you take some of this one as well and you could do as much as you want the ribbon I'm going to do about that much ribbon I'm going to take them right up here Take some wire, again, about 10 inches or so. Bring it around. Let's get this out of the way. Bring it around right here. Bring up this. And now we've got these cascades and they have some long loops on it too. If you had some a metallic thin gold ribbon, you could add that in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the ends so that they're pretty and I'm just going to cut them at uh, angles you could cut them straight a straight blunt cut or cut a little bit of an angle that's what I'm doing just making sure they all look pretty not all crooked let's see I've got one more end over here and the rest was just loops and I'm just gonna let them be all dangly like that like kind of uh, looks a little bit tangled I don't care that's the way I want it to look and I'm going to put this from below onto here okay you could do that from below and put it on there or you could weave it across under this flower right here pull it through so the lengths are right here and then tape it right there that's what I'm going to do well <laughs> that's what I'm doing sorry that I'm off camera I am sitting down now I'm not standing anymore because uh, I'm really tired I'm gonna trim off the wire right here because I just I'm getting tired but you would tape it all the way down to make sure everything is catching on but the, you know the, the ribbon is not anything heavy so I don't I don't fear that that's gonna come off so I feel like I taped it enough there okay so I still got this and I still got this, but I said I was gonna do a loopy bow. So I'm gonna take my wider ribbon. And this time I'm not gonna make the, the tail so long. 
but I do want it to be longer than the two flowers that are on the sides. So I'm just gonna go about, here's the very long, longest one right here. Compare it to that to right here. Pinch it right there and make big loops that kind of dangle like so. And this is, let's see, my lips are dry, my lipstick is, ugh, okay. About 10 inches, okay, so you're gonna make about 10 inch lips, and I'm gonna make maybe four, three or four, I don't know, let me see, how do I feel about that? I'll go ahead and do four. Maybe three would be nicer, but I'm gonna go ahead and go with four. So this is where you're gonna decide you know how many loops you want do you want a lot of ribbon flopping out or just a little bit okay now i'm going to trim i cut some wire here i usually like to cut the wire ahead of time especially if i'm doing a bunch but when i get down to the last bows or whatever i'm doing i just cut it as i need it okay i don't want to really have you know wire if you cut it you just save it and then just use it for some project somewhere but um if um you don't want to have it roaming around, then don't cut it ahead of time. Just cut it as you need it. Okay, I'm gonna now tape that. And I've got a little fan going here, so it's blowing my bow and my ribbon all over the place. But anyway, I'm gonna tape it now here so that it all is together. And this is where everything's gonna get all tangled up. That's okay. Just turn it <laughs> and tape all the way down but I'm not gonna do it because I kind of don't want to waste time we're getting to that crunch time people all right okay so I've got this bit now I've got a bow right here yes I could have put the bow on here and then put that on there but I'm doing it this way and I'll show you here what I'm doing okay now the area where it doesn't have any greenery where I made my bouquet is this part right here. That part is what's gonna go against here, okay? So now I'm gonna take this stem, I'm gonna put this on top, like so. Push it a little bit against that flower because then you're gonna open it up like that and that's gonna be too far away. So then we're gonna go up here instead Let's see, where's the part there, right there, where it doesn't have any flower. And that's where these two are going to meet. Now, remember I told you, don't wrap this whole thing because I want to have these stems, you know, free. Like, if, if, even if they were fresh flowers, I want them to be free. So that's where I'm going to cut, where I can now cut this bit. I don't need that. And this is all I have now to wrap together. So I'm going to wrap that up as much as I can. What I would recommend is you put some hot glue in there and get those two bits to stick together. These two bits to stick together because you got a short little stem. Wrap it up with some wire and then wrap it up real good with tape. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some hot glue on there. There we go. Rest this on here. There we go, like that. I'm, I'm pushing it up a little bit more because I realize that that's not the position that I want it. So I just want to make sure that this stem is right at the, where this tape stops, okay? So now if I wanted, I could add some tape, some wire also. And I'll just cut a little bit just to show you. You want to wait till the hot glue is dry. You know, hold it together real good and then let it, okay, and then just wire it just to kind of keep it together. Push down and now I'm going to wrap it up with some more greenery tape, real nice. Wrap it up a whole, quite a few times and do it nice and neatly, overlapping, pulling and wrapping, pulling and wrapping and overlapping. Okay, I'm gonna cut it right there. You would wanna tape back upward, but I'm gonna stop right there because I'm trying to kill time here. Okay, so that is what you would do. And now we're gonna bend this downward because this is a cascading bouquet. 
when I bend it downward, then you're going to put we'll maneuver anything you need to maneuver. Open it up or close it up or whatever you got to do. Maneuver all your flowers so they're in the right position. So I bent it right here. Can you see that? There you go. You can see that it's bent. But now I'm going to bend it a little bit more and I'm going to go right here where these two flowers are right across each other. And at that little spot, I'm going to bend it some more. Okay? Now bend the little flowers as well. So everything is cascading a downward. Grab your ribbons, pull them wherever which way you want them to cascade through your bouquet, wherever you want them to fall. Okay, let me put them back where I had them, which was going through here and there. All right. And I'll probably look at it when I'm looking at it uh, from the top rather than um, and fix things a little bit more. And now what I want to do is back here, this is the handle where it's going to be held from. I am going to curve it downward. And you want to wrap, at this point, in my mind, I'm thinking all of this is going to be wrapped with floral tape. So I'm going to be doing that. But I'm going to bend this as much as I can because this is now going to be the hook from where I'm going to be grabbing my flowers, or rather the bride will be grabbing it from when she's holding her bouquet. And I got some greenery that just popped out, and I'm going to have to put some glue in there and make sure it doesn't happen again. Okay. There we go. Let me make sure these items back here are spread nicely. Here you go. I'm going to move the camera so that you can see this bouquet. All right? So you can see it better. But that is a cascading bouquet. The last thing I want to do, and that is up to you, is take your beautiful pins, as many as you want. If you want to buy more than that, it's up to you. Take your beautiful pins, and I'm going to take one of them into the center flower and I already know this is going to be a little bit of a tough job so I'm just going to bend the pin downward like that so that I can insert it into the flower and I've already done this in the other bouquet I knew it was a little bit of a struggle to push it in but you know I got it in there and there you go I put that one pin in there you can put as many as you want or not at all I'm going to put one for now but I'm going to go ahead and uh Take my bouquet and look at it up from the top and fix it up, m move things around and make sure things are kind of kind of evenly spread, not necessarily. Make sure that my ribbons are dangling in the correct way. Finish taping this whole bit here. Maybe I'll put another a bow of ribbon here. And that is it. So I'll be back. All right, here is my finished cascading bouquet. It will be held from the back like this so that it cascades downward as you hold it like so there you go this is also an idea to create a swag that you can put anywhere and i've decided to add after putting the one in the center i decided to add the other two pins on the other two flowers that were cascading down but there you go there's my cascading bow and i hope you enjoyed it uh, if you want ideas on how um, or the idea of how i wrapped this diamond wrap, in case you're wondering what I was talking about on the stem, go visit the video for this bouquet. Again, link down in the description box below. This is a diamond wrap. I show you that in that video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you have learned something. Do this on a smaller scale just uh, so that you can practice a bit and uh, you'll see that you'll, you'll enjoy it. It's quite relaxing if you sit down and do this. It does take some time, but again, if you do it, smaller maybe add less items it won't take you as long as this did me and it took me about two and a half hours to do this and that's about as long as my video is and my video will be two and a half hours for you to watch but there you go that's it and i want to thank everyone give me a big old thumbs up i'm giving myself a big old thumbs up leave a nice comment down below subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and please share on your social medias and as always enjoy mm -hmm.